Hello, I'm Lizzie and this is Lizzie Reads and welcome to my 2021 stats. Um, so I haven't done a whole lot of end of year, beginning of the year content yet. Um, I just haven't had the time like or the room to film really, um, but thankfully I have today, which is fantastic. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to run through all my 2021 stats as of Storygraph because I didn't complete uploading, like filling in my spreadsheet. So I don't have any of those like specific stats, but I do, I just want to like run through them as like a base point, as a reference point for you. Um, but this, this is going to be more of a chatty sort of like chatting through the stats and talking about like how I feel my year, my 2021 reading has been. Um, I have some more content planned from this and favourite books and etc of the year, but um one thing i will add is that i know i didn't do all of my goals i smashed the actual number of books i wanted to read but other than that like i haven't um gone in too much more with it so i still got some like i still like those rest those goals are just dead in the water really like um I'm, i haven't tracked them in the way that i would like to so um yeah let's get into the reading goals first of all um i'm just looking at them on my ipad here i read 178 books which my original goal i think was 120 then i upped it to 150 and then i went and completed 178 books uh totaling at 500 and no 50,836 pages and i had a 45,000 page goal um this is pretty good going obviously some people get really close to that 50,000 mark without reading 178 books but I read a lot of short books which is why I liked I had the higher goal um because I've been enjoying a lot of fast fast paced shorter books but um I will say is that um I wasn't after I'd sort of it got to that a point in the year when I realized I was going to be able to reach 150 after I'd reached 120 I didn't push it any further than that because I didn't want to be stressed at the end of the year and like I probably could have in November and December tried a little bit harder or like the last quarter of the year and I potentially could have tried really harder to get to 200 books or but I just I couldn't be bothered um so that was quite good I didn't feel like pressure in any sense um I don't think I was behind um for much of the year I was quite I was pretty much ahead for most of it um but that's just the way the nature of my reading has changed. And then it says here my most um, my most popular reading mood is adventurous, um, and then light-hearted, um, following on from emotional, mysterious, and funny, um, and then dark, which is is bizarre because I feel like adventurous is just what people put down for fantasy. I kind of feel like these moods aren't super accurate. Like they're not always like what I would um, classify a book to be. Um, but yeah, definitely adventurous and lighthearted are probably easy reads and like fun fantasy reads. So yeah, that's pretty much it. In terms of pace, I read fifty percent fast paced books, which is definitely definitely the way way I felt my reading went last year. I read a lot of short romance books, and a well, I did last year I read a lot of short romance books, and I read a lot of um, picture books, graphic novels, and I include them all in my reading because. It's my fucking reading and if anyone wants to come for me for it i'll get pissed off <laughs> because um i'm just a bit annoyed by the discourse that's going around a bit on twitter at the moment about um what counts as real reading i mean i know most people are against the negative comments but the negative comments are there about audiobooks and yeah just fuck off none of your business none of your bit none yeah i need a coffee break after getting annoyed about that and read like 30 percent like medium like you know, a bit of both pace books and then uh eighteen percent slow pace. And that's pretty good to be fair. Um I'm I'm not expecting that to change. I don't want that to change. Well, I'm not interested if that changes. The next one, however, is one where I would like the reflection to be a little bit different. Um so I read forty eight percent books under three hundred pages. Now this exactly here will tell you why I read so many books last year. Um, uh, it's because I've read a lot of books under 300 pages so that's a lot I read uh, 20 volumes of Lumber Janes so they're 120 pages each 
Um, so that's the whole chunk there. I read so many fantasy series where the books are like 289 pages or 260 pages short, but they're still, um, you've still got a full novel, but they're just fast paced, all about the romance, and they've got no other plot to them, so that's kind of the point. Um, and then 41% books between 300 and 500 pages, or 499 pages, um, which is a pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't actually want the amount of short books I read to change drastically because I have 11% at 500 plus pages. However, if you look at the books that are on the 500 plus pages, if you just click on them and I'll bring them up. So they're things like The Poppy War, Battle Royale, From Blood and Ash, The Paying Guest, Royal Assassin, um, King of Scars, The Eye of the World, The Shadow in the Ember, um... Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, The Great Hunt, all of all, just like, bleh, bleh, just like all, basically my chunky fantasies and my chunky fantasy romances. Um, and do you know what? There's a high proportion of four and five star books here because the books I invest the most time in, I tend to enjoy them like a huge amount. However, so that doesn't make me think that if I read these books all the time, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't feel that way because it takes me so long to get through some of them that then I need to relax and just read like my romances. So I think personally I want to increase this to maybe like 20% like that's like what so 20% 500 plus and then maybe like a little bit less in both of the either categories they're like even out um but I was I would be happy if um still if my biggest category was under 300 pages um yeah I, I really don't care um to be honest um I would like to read some of the longer books but I've got a lot of them I want to read um but I don't want the proportion I don't care about the proportion as long as it just as long as I get what I want to read read I just don't care um so basically in this video all I'm doing is telling you I don't care about the stats because I like reading there you go um, but yeah, so some of those big fan big books are the books I enjoyed the most this year, so like Assassin's Quest and um, the From Blood and Ash books, which were my 2021 saviours. Um, they completely ch changed the landscape of my reading um, in terms of just making you realise actually romance is so much fucking fun and I love it. So there we go. More from that in my favourites video because that's just the way it is. So last year we read four, we, I read 4% non-fiction and um, 96, I don't know why I had to look, I could, I can do 100 takeaways for, I promise, I promise I can. Um, I read 4% non-fiction, um, which is, I think, less than previous years. Um, I do quite like a non-fiction, um, I think before non-fiction used to be more of like my palette cleanser reads or like I'd read one every couple of months. Um, but I think the way my reading has increased in terms of just reading so much more books that it's just round out. So I don't think I'm necessarily reading less. I just think I'm reading more outside of it. And then we get to the really interesting, really interesting part. And that is um, the fantasy, uh, the genres. And all year it was neck and neck and neck between fantasy and romance and I've always said that fantasy is my favourite genre um, and I really for one for, for a minute there I thought that um, romance was going to pip it to the post and I was I was shocked I was really shocked but you know what fantasy won out at 61 books I think that is and romance hit 60 so um there are some crossovers in these genres further down um but yeah, I, I predominantly read fantasy and romance split um which tells you my favorite genre apparently is now fantasy romance because that sweet spot of my favorite two things is the best however that's by the way um, yeah, so I read a predominantly fantasy and romance, which is like the whole sort of idea of my whole new awakening that actually, bloody hell, I do love a romance. 
And then next we have children's because I've just really enjoyed Keep in your own middle grade since I found booktube and since I found videos like um, Gavin's videos and Jade's videos and everyone who just absolutely champions middle grade. Um, I've really been getting more and more into middle grade as time goes on. Like um, I, I've been reading more middle grade for about I think I was in my final year of uni so that was like four years ago three or four years ago but since then it keeps increasing and I keep seeing more and some of them have become some of my favorite books um, and I, they are so I've just been really enjoying it and then we've got contemporary and comics which I'm not surprised by um at all um because I obviously read so many graphic novels last year and like some others different ones as well um, but there's some of them are categorised twice, so obviously I think some of the middle grade are also categorised as children's, which you can see. So I think that's why they are categorised as... Um, I think that's why they appear twice, and then obviously as you go down, um, it's got things like young adult, LGBTQ, and then just the things that I've read a couple of them um, throughout the year, um, which... They're just almost like the sub-genres within the genres. Um, and then it says here that I've read 88% print and 12% digital. This is not true. I'm pretty sure the digital would be much higher because a lot of the romance books I've read have been on Kindle Unlimited. So, yeah. And then it says here my most read authors, um, and that would be Shannon Waters and Cat Lee. They are both, um, they both work on Lumberjanes. Obviously, I read 20 volumes of Lumberjanes. And if they worked on it the most out of like all the other contributors, they're like the top names that they appear the most. Then we've got uh, Jennifer Armentrout. Um, so I read this year From Blood and Ash, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, Crown of Yield of Bones and A Shadow in the Ember. I think that's four books. I read uh, From Blood and Ash three times. I've read um, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire three times last year. And I've read Crown of Yield of Bones twice. And then so three plus three plus two. And then a shadow in the ember that should be 10. I'm not quite sure why it's only at nine. I think maybe, maybe did I only read, or maybe I only read Kingdom of Flesh and Fire twice as well. Yeah, that would make sense. So, yeah, I've read, I've reread them. Um, I talk a little bit more about it in my favorite books of the year, or my best no, they're not my best books of the year, but my favorite books of the year, the books I've enjoyed most this year, and about um. From Brandon Ash just becoming a real comfort read for me um but I'll go more into that into another video and then we've got Rena Kent who she had like a six or no eight book series um which I read and they were actually my least favorite romances of the year but I was sort of enjoying the fast paces of them and it wasn't my favorite but I read that whole series um and then I read a lot of Lee Bardugo because I reread the entire Grishaverse um and then Becca Steele, I read a whole series by her, um, one of her romance series, Lemon Snicket. I got up to date on um, a series of unfortunate events. I wish I just didn't fucking bother. Um, Noelle Stevenson, I'm pretty sure, uh, contributed to Lumberjanes. Uh, Julia Quinn um, it wrote The Bridgetons, and I read the first five in that series. Um, and then also Grace Ellis, I believe at one point or another, has been a contributor for the Lama Jane series. Now, this monthly tracker, like where I've read how many books I read and how many pages, I think. So it's really like up and down, like you can see some months I didn't read a lot, some months I read loads, some months I read really short books. Um, so my best month for pages would have been June, when I read about 8,000 pages in one month, which is pretty good. Um, and then, June was all, no, June wasn't my highest, December was my highest book month where I read 20 something, like 28 books, I think, 28, 29 books, um, but obviously I did read at least 10 picture books, so the page goal, the page count is like pretty much average there, but May, June, June was whatever I thought, I think, so um, I really went ham. I was trying to read the book every day, I think. I don't know. I did. I tried to do that like three times last year and then I only actually managed it in December when I wasn't even trying. And then onto my star ratings. Um, I had no uh, one and two star books. Um, I basically rated everything quite favourably. Um, 
but I did rate some books 2.5 stars um, and I've already started being a little bit harsher with my ratings um, just pushing things down to more like a 2.5 if although it had some elements I enjoyed mostly it was fucking annoying like I can still read a book that wasn't good but yeah so I've been sort of shifting around the way I've been rating because this is all very like very heavy I mean mostly I rated the books three stars um but you can see the four and four point four point five stars to five stars is quite a lot um and I rated 21 books five stars uh because a considerable amount of rereads on here um and things like Heartstopper and just like a five star doesn't have to be the best book in the world for me um, but I will talk a bit more about that in my uh, best books of the year video. So this is just sort of like, um, this was just me like going through all the stats. Obviously you've just watched it. If you haven't, if you just skipped to the end, that would have been weird. But um, I do just want to say that um, I am happy with the way my reading is going. Um, I'm reading very much for fun and I'm not, you know, critiquing everything. I mean, I could do with being a little bit more critical. That's something I'm looking forward to, to being a little bit more. I'm using Corpile a lot more and a lot more strictly. Um, but also going with my gut and um, being a little bit more realistic about how much of books I did like. But I did read a lot of fun books last year. Um, the main thing like I've taken away from 2021 is actually how much I just love romance and how much romance is just like my it just makes me happy and I feel really relaxed when I'm reading it. I don't know what you want. I just want to get extremely and excited about fictional characters. I don't, I really don't know what to say to you about it. But I have, um, sort of, um, in my best books of the year or my favourite books of the year, um, there is a little bit of, um, give and take about what is arguably the best book that I read all year and what is, um, just the book that I enjoyed the most so check that video out if you want to watch my internal struggle and you want some recommendations from me or you just want to hear about me gushing over Castiel Gunea I don't I really don't I really don't know what you're expecting at this point there's hundreds of videos on it so thanks for watching goodbye